Hi, this is Daryl Maya from Keller, Texas. Today is Friday, September 3rd, 2010. So nice to see the weekend here. Let's get started today with some things. You know, of course, they're continuing these peace talks in Washington. I uh, find it very ironic that here's Hurricane Earl beating down on Washington at this time when they're talking about dividing Jerusalem. You know, God punishes people every day people get punished just like a father would punish a son if he did the wrong thing God punishes people whether they believe in him or not if they're doing the wrong things or something that goes against him and uh, it's throughout the Bible God says he's punishing the Jewish people for turning their backs on his Savior that he sent his son Jesus think we've seen the Jews be punished over the last 2,000 years? I'd say so. They were scattered all over the world and only until 1948 were they drawn back to Israel. Of course it's not the same size Israel as is described in Genesis, but it's Israel nonetheless and Jerusalem the capital that has been their capital for over 3,500 years. Let's talk about some things going on today and in IsraelNationalNews.com you know, Obama made a comment saying the direct talks will end the occupation. This is a phrase Muslims like to use, or Palestinians, or people that are opposing the Jews. Occupation, as if they don't belong there. U.S. President Barack Obama announced he is optimistic his team would succeed in jump-starting direct talks aimed at ending Israel's occupation and leading to a formation of a new Palestinian Authority country. Okay, we know these talks have already spawned two terrorist attacks this week alone, and Hamas has vowed they're going to step up their tax, but I just thought that was a very poor choice of words on the part of our president. Um, end of the occupation. I wonder how my Jewish friends feel about that statement. I, for one, get a little offended when somebody calls it that. Here's a story out of Yahoo.com. Iran's Ahmadinejad calls on Palestinians to fight on. This out of Tehran today. Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad urged Palestinians to keep up their armed struggle against Israel a day after Israeli and Palestinian leaders agreed to continue talks on a U.S.-backed peace deal. U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who, who hosted the first sessions of talks between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in Washington, voiced confidence that this latest attempt to bring peace to the region could succeed where so many others have failed. Ahmadinejad said that the talks seeking to end a conflict that has boiled for six decades would once again fail. He criticized some Muslim leaders for not providing all-out support to the Palestinians in their revolt against Israel. Palestine's issues cannot be resolved through talks with the enemies of the Palestinian nation, said Ahmadinejad. Resisting is the only way to rescue the Palestinians. He told this to worshippers at Tehran University in a live broadcast to mark the annual Al-Quds Day, or Jerusalem Day, in the Islamic Republic. He said, how can these talks succeed when the mediators are those who created this conflict? Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> the things this guy says just really strike me. Again, he's talking about uh, the nations of the region are able to eliminate the Zionist regime from the face of the earth. He said, adding the Israeli regime has no future, its life has come to an end. How many times have we heard this guy call for the complete destruction of Israel or the Jewish people or the Zionist regime or wanting to wipe them off the face of the earth and oh yeah by the way we want to pursue some nukes but only for peaceful purposes I just don't see how this man is still able to do what he is doing just find it very bizarre here's a story out of Depka.com Iran's revenge Syria and Hezbollah joined to sink Israeli warships Tehran and its extreme and terrorist allies have failed to abort Barack Obama's initiative for direct Israel-Palestinian diplomacy and have hit back with two belligerent steps. 
Depka Files military sources disclose that Syria and the Lebanese Hezbollah have set up a joint military command for sinking Israeli warships and Hamas has brought all 13 Palestinian rejectionist organizations under one roof for a sustained bid to intensify terror operations against Israel. At a news conference in Gaza early Friday today, shortly after the Washington talks were rated positive, a Hamas military arms spokesman announced the creation of a single command encompassing all 13 Palestinian rejectionist groups operating out of the Gaza Strip and Damascus for a concerted campaign of terror against Israel. You know me, I'm always, when I see Damascus in there, and they're going to launch a campaign against Israel, and here's Damascus involved. You know Isaiah 17:1, the prophecy that says, Damascus will cease to exist as a city and it will become a ruinous heap. Pretty much the only thing that could do that, other than the power of God, would be a nuclear bomb. And I can see if this rhetoric steps up like this and they want to start um, bombing Tel Aviv. It says they're going to start raining missiles on Tel Aviv. Hamas, whose very existence is to annihilate and completely destroy Israel. Of course they don't want peace. They would no longer have a need to exist if there was peace. So would Israel respond with nukes right into Damascus completely destroy it they certainly are capable of it oh I pray for the people that live there because it's not gonna be a place you wanna be here's a story out of israeltoday.com you know I told you about uh, a few days ago that that the kids that were made orphans because uh, the Palestinian Arabs Hamas had killed them, uh, killed their parents. Here's a story. Gaza Arabs celebrate massacre of Jewish civilians. They celebrate a massacre of civilians. The Palestinian Arabs of the Gaza Strip came out in mass to celebrate the brutal slayings of four Jewish civilians in Judea, the so-called West Bank, earlier in the evening. Photos taken by Reuters and the Associated Press show Palestinian men, women, and children waving Hamas flags flashing victory signs and passing out candies to commemorate the murder of Yikshak and Talia Ames, Kocheva Ivan Kaim and Avisha Schindler. Seven Israeli children were made orphans by the attack. In one of the photos, a Palestinian man has given his young boy a toy gun to carry to the celebratory rally, apparently hoping he'll grow up to be a killer. Proud dad. Mm. So here's these people celebrating the death of innocent civilians. Nobody says anything. I just find this very double standard and one sided. You know, if some Israeli soldiers had gone out and brutally attacked an innocent Palestinian family and made their children orphans. Oh, the UN would be up in arms calling for their death, calling for Israel to be wiped off the face of the earth. It would be such a different story if it were the other way around. I'm so sick of this. This is coming from that peaceful religion. They're so peaceful. Let's celebrate death of innocent civilians. Yay! Ah. Here's another story similar to it out of Yahoo. Muslim cleric calls for beheading of Dutch politician. This out of Amsterdam, a well-known Australian Muslim cleric has called for the beheading of Dutch anti-Islamic politician Geert Wilders, a newspaper said today. That peaceful religion showing us once again how peaceful they are. Off with his head! Yeah, that's so peaceful. So peaceful. I'm so sick of this. You know, I have to go to John 16 verse 1 through 3 you know this verse probably most likely this was Jesus talking he says all this I have told you so that you will not go astray they will put you out of the synagogue in fact a time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he is offering a service to God they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me okay right there Jesus is telling us about these kind of people. 
He's saying these people are going to think they're doing a service to God, but guess what? They don't know God because they don't know me. They don't know the Father. So what God are they doing this to? Not the one true God, not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Apparently, it's a false God. Yes, it's a false God, and I'm sorry. That's who the Muslims worship, a false God. It's not the one true God. Because who else in this world ever kills in the name of God? They holler, Allahu Akbar. God is great. Right before they kill somebody, they think they're doing God a service by killing Christians, by killing the infidels, people who don't believe they, the way they do. Clearly, they're worshiping the wrong God. And I'm sick and tired of people being afraid of being politically correct to step up and say something. It's time we take a stand because you know what? They have something right. This is a holy war. And as far as I'm concerned, it's good against evil. Here's a story out of Jerusalem Post. Nasrallah says Jerusalem cannot be the capital of Israel. Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah said during a Jerusalem Day commemoration speech today that the talks are stillborn and said Jerusalem and not even one of its streets can be the capital of the state called Israel. Wake up, you idiot! It's been the capital of Israel for over 3,500 years. Ah, I can't stand it when people deny the truth. Here's something says the smartest man in the world says God is not needed for creation. Stephen Hawking said God is not needed for creation. <laughs> Sounds like a complete idiot to me. What a moron. Um, you know what? I can't wait till Jesus comes and makes known his name throughout the world and all these doubters and all these scoffers will suddenly know the truth. And that time is coming very soon. I urge you, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, the time is now, because time is drawing short. He will be appearing soon. Here's a story out of Nano Patents and Innovations. There's a new Nano Patent. It's an RFID body chip that allows remote monitoring of a body at a distance powered by bodily fluids. This thing is powered by your own the enzymes in your body. It's an RFID transponder. I think this could easily be the mark of the beast spoken of by Daniel the prophet um, and also in Revelation. Let me go to, you know, all this stuff is leading to a one world government and let me read you Daniel 7 verse 23 speaking of a one world government. He gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms and will devour the whole earth trampling it down and crushing it. Let me go to Revelation 13 verse 7 and 8. I'm doing on time here. Uh, Revelation 13, verse 7 and 8. This says that he was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. He was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast whose names have not been written in the book of life. You know what? I'm going to have to skip to John 16, verse 33. Actually, you know what? I, I've already read you that verse, haven't I? No, nope, I haven't. Sorry. This was Jesus talking, saying, I have told you these things, so that in me you, you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have already overcome this world. Jesus is the only way to truth, people. God bless you. I hope you know that.